All right, hello everyone. Today, my name is Peter. We're gonna look at this, item number one and item number two. Actually, I'm gonna put item number two over here and there's actually multiple amounts of item number one, like all these and uh, all these up here. These are markers, Copic markers. And item number two is a fountain pen. Look at that. This one is actually made of concrete or cement or something, but that's not particularly important in this situation. Basically what I wanna to do today is uh, combine items two and one into a drawing and see what we can do. The main thing I'm wondering about is the order of operations, right? And uh, actually, I think I'm going to start with one. In math, you have PEMDAS, right? It's all laid out for you. Parentheses, exponents, division. Wait, PEMDAS. P -E yeah, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Addition, subtract, sub subtraction. But with drawing, you gotta kind of figure it out for yourself. Do I wanna do the ink lines first, the marker lines first, one after the other, kind of, you know, one in each pen, one in each hand at the same time. There's no like, it hasn't been decided for you ahead of time, at the beginning of time, like it has for math. Actually, also, I don't know if this is like, good paper to do this with. It's maybe not good paper, but it's also not uh, the worst paper. This is light blue. Just kind of drawing some 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 shapes here. I'm work, I'm keeping on my keeping an eye and a, my thoughts on the negative space here too. I'm drawing the positive shapes, which are the shapes I'm actually drawing in blue, and also the negative space, which is the what I'm leaving in white on the inside because I'm going to come back and draw stuff other stuff there later. Actually, I'm, it feels like sometimes I'm actually drawing the negative space more because like these white lines here, it's going to be something else later. Let's leave it like that for now. You know, I could work on developing a color palette first, but I just think I just want to kind of wing it. I've got a lot of grays here. Um, Maybe this uh, C5 cool gray. Cool grays have more blue added to them. Warm grays have more red and neutral. It's supposedly neither. So that's what they want you to think. Right now, I'm, I'm going to admit to you that I don't like this at all, but I don't want to give up so quickly. You know, maybe it's time to come in with some ink. See how some ink feels. I think this is um. I think this is this this ink in the pen. Carbon. Carbon platinum carbon. Black. I think I said that all backwards. I think these this ink and this this marker should go together well in the sense that it doesn't uh, like start smearing or they don't 
they don't like work against each other. Sometimes you combine two inks or, you know, like a certain watercolor and a kind of ink and it starts like blossoming across the paper because one ink, you know, maybe you have an ink that isn't waterproof or I think these markers are alcohol based. I think this is working okay right now. The lines do get slightly thicker as we draw on the marker, but I think that's just because the water, no, I think it's just because the paper itself is kind of damp. Maybe I'll use these little lines that I left here between the spaces to draw something. What other color should we use besides the blue? The gray doesn't really count as a color, I feel like. It's kind of a, a non-color. We could use pink, green, orange. I mean, orange is kind of, uh, it's kind of an easy choice. If you look at like, you know, all the popular movie posters, they always like combining blue and orange. They're such, create such a strong contrast. Hmm. You don't really have to draw anything in particular. I mean, look how popular things like acrylic paint pours are right now. It's just a bunch of like swirls and shapes. So if you just want to draw swirls and shapes, that's fine. kind of what I'm doing. Soon I think I'm going to pick up a marker again though. I'm going to give them a, it's kind of like doing a, a coloring book, but you're drawing the lines and coming in with the color at the same time, like making your own coloring book as you go. Also, I could just, you know, I think this is just straight up black right here. So, oops, I could, um, I don't know if I want to use straight up black though. Maybe just like a very dark, a very dark gray if I want things to be dark. Or maybe instead of using black for dark areas, I can use like heavy blues or purples. Here's a oppression blue. I feel like I keep on zooming in either too much or too little. What color next? I'm thinking this right here, yellow green. Let's see what this looks like if we add it into a couple places. Okay. You can do darker color. I'm pretty sure you can, uh, <laughs> if you've seen some of my other drawings and videos, you can know I don't use these colors very often. This is pretty much uncharted territory for me, but I'm pretty sure you can use, when it comes to this kind of stuff, you can use the darker colors over lighter colors, but it's pretty hard to use the lighter colors back over the dark colors. So maybe it's, it's smart to be using these, these light colors first. 
And so it kind of felt like my pen and my marker picked up some something from the ink right there and kind of dragged it along, making some weird strokes, but it's okay. If you ever feel bad about what happened, just, here's my advice, just stop feeling bad. All right, I hope that helps. You're welcome. The other end of these markers has a um, chisel tip, which is, I don't know. I don't know if I really like that. It's much more precise, but uh, it's, I don't like the shape of it. It's all rectangular. Maybe, maybe I should come in with some uh, dark green. Well, maybe this peacock blue. What, do, what would this look like if I come in here a little bit? A little bit in here, in here. A little bit of peacock blue in here. What color should be next? We got blue, dark blue, green, this weird gray thing. I'm thinking a warmer color. These are both pretty cool colors so far. If I, you know, if I go into like little corners like this and make them darker, it kind of makes them recede into the drawing like there's uh, shadows here. I think that's the effect it has. We'll see, Some things, sometimes things like this don't really reveal the true effect until you get much farther into the drawing, so it's, it's hard to know. Well, I might use this other blue a little bit more while I'm at this stage. Maybe a little bit more blue here. Yeah, it's actually pretty satisfying. At first, sometimes it looks like there's about to be a lot of like gross, annoying brush strokes, but I guess it's the alcohol type marker that it is. It kind of, sometimes the brush strokes just kind of disappear. They haven't all disappeared. There's still some brush strokes here. I could kind of add some light blue to the dark blue. Oops, went over the line there. That's okay. Everything's fine. What color next? How about some uh, sand? Let's get sandy. It's an interesting color. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous because looking at the, uh, I'm looking at the feed of the camera right now and these colors look completely different on the camera feed as they do on the, in real life on the paper. So I'm hoping that once I upload it and I'm editing the video, I can tweak it a little bit so it looks more true to life. I'm hoping that what you guys end up seeing ends up looking pretty close to what I'm seeing right here. I'll put I'll put a note in the description saying, <laughs> you know, like from one to ten, how close 
how close it got. They won't really know until, until much later. Usually it's just, you know, usually I'm just working in black and white and it's not as much of an issue. What happens if I add some of this in here? It's kind of like weird little, it's like shading almost. I think I'm gonna save this little clump right here for some other color, some other major color. Maybe add like some other similar lump in the middle here. The kind of paper I'm using, I'm not sure what it is exactly, but I pretty much just bought like, I think it's just called cardstock. It's pretty much just like really thick printer paper. Might be the best way to describe it <laughs> or not. I'm not sure. Wish I had better, dis better, better info for you if you care about what kind of paper this is, but I, it's not fancy paper. It's like, it's like one step up from normal paper, maybe two steps up. There, you, I mean, if you've ever been to like an art store, like a nice art store, like Jerry's or Blick or something, like, you know, there is some very expensive paper over there that can cost a lot, even for just one sheet. And uh, you can get very intimidated and you can like easily psych yourself out about even just making one drawing or something on a piece of paper, which I think sometimes is very counterproductive. But I mean, sometimes I guess it's, it's what you need. It depends on what you need for the uh, art you're trying to do at the time. Sorry, I hope not too much of this has been off the camera. And try adding the sand to the green. That's interesting. Sand to the gray. How about that? It's kind of fun. Yeah, I got more ink on the. I might get like a little scratch sheet here, um, just in case I get like ink on the nib, just so I can clean it off. Make sure the stroke is clean again, because I had a few like little dirty. Pretty strokes right there, kind of annoying. All right, let's choose, uh, I could do now, I could do either more ink or another color. I'm thinking another color. I'm kind of enjoying the color right now. I'm thinking a reddish or pinkish thing. I'm thinking pink. Here's a pink, it's called pink or flesh that's <laughs> kind of pink this is kind of our options right here in that let's try the pink let's try the pink if it feels a little adventurous I think I'm gonna put it right here ooh It's not quite as bright as I expected. I don't know, but it is pretty, I'll admit it is pretty close to the uh, the cap color there. So it's not like it was false advertising. So I don't know. I don't know if this pink really goes with the rest of the drawing. I might have regretted. I'm, I'm, I'm suppressing regrets right now.
Or maybe it'll be good. Maybe, just, maybe I just need to work the pink into more of the rest of the drawing so that it doesn't feel so out of place. Like this. Maybe there needs to be a lot of pink. If there's enough pink, then all the other colors will seem out of place. Yeah. Pink and the sand looks interesting together. Also, a lot of this could change quickly by adding some more, you know, like pen and uh, contrast. There's not a lot of contrast right now. One thing you can do to see how much contrast there is, is uh, use your phone, put it on, uh, let's see. Use your phone, go over here to, you know, like one of the black settings and look at it, look at your drawing through the black and white setting. And then you can see, that gives you an idea of like how much contrast there is. There's more than I thought actually. I call this blue in there does help. I'm doing like a, I'm putting some some sharp edges on here because I want to create like a little like invisible border around the side around the edges. I don't really want to draw all the way to the edge of the paper. That'll be a lot of drawing. It'd be intimidating to have to feel like I have to fill the whole page. I like this pink. I'm afraid to draw over this little smudge right here, whatever this is. I wonder if I have like a like a bit of eraser right in this eraser is a little dubious. I'm afraid it'll <laughs> Yeah, things are getting worse quickly. Um, maybe that'll be an area where I add a lot of contrast. <laughs> draw something dark over that. Got to work with through the smudges and imperfections. I don't even know how that got there. I think it may have fallen off like the nib of my pen when I was unscrewing it. I think I need to add like, this is like, there's like a, a center. There's like a core to the drawing right now, but I don't want it necessarily being like a core with everything spraying off. I think I want like another, another thing going on here. All right, I want to find like a, I think I'm going to go back to this um a little bit of a little bit more light blue here i'm gonna draw like some little orbs Maybe like this hmm is this the light blue yeah, I think this other blue is much darker. Oh, that was the chisel tip. Oh yeah, that is the dark blue here. Oh. So dark. But I need some darkness to make the rest of it look better. It's 
going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Just work with it. Go for it. You know, you got to let go a little bit. You know, I, like right now I could easily feel like the drawing is getting out of control. It's going south. It's going badly. It looks terrible now. But, uh, just, just keep drawing. Be some more sand in here. Maybe it's time to add some more ink. Maybe it's time to add some. Should I do vermilion or crimson? I think I will test this out. Oh, that's so bright. It's a little scary how bright that is. I feel like this uh, crimson, the vermilion is better. The, I don't know, I'm a little intimidated by the crimson. Bring it in here. And if you ever find yourself saying like, oh, I'm, this looks ugly. Like, great. Make some ugly art. That's, that's great. Go for it. I support you in your ugly art making. Sometimes ugly art is the interesting stuff. And even if it's not interesting, just make it anyways. Like, sit there and wonder, am I enjoying this feeling of moving the pen across the paper right now? This little marker, watching the colors appear underneath. It is kind of satisfying. I got to admit, this is satisfying. Even if I'm not, you know, it's not turning out how I envisioned you know, I was all day, I was thinking, I think I want to sit down and draw later. I got to admit, there was a little idea in my head of what it might look like. And yeah, it's not turning out like that. So that's okay, because this feels pretty cool just sitting here drawing these colors on the paper. It's satisfying. Slowly, soothingly. I might try to draw some lines with the edge of the chisel tip, nib, whatever it's called. Ch chisel nib. Yeah. That way all the lines aren't black from the pen. I think I'm gonna have to add some yellow to this before all is said and done. I, you know, I've been resisting so far just because I feel like sometimes yellow is a bit of a crutch that I add to these, but uh, I feel like it's just gonna look so cool.
Then I can come back later, add some other light color in between these red lines. Okay, I'm actually liking that area up there more than I expected. You know, I, I struggle from this too, that I think like, hey, I'm sitting here, I'm drawing. I, it's good to get inspired by other people's drawings, but sometimes also it's their drawings and their, you know, their art gets stuck into my, stuck in my head as the idea of like, what a good drawing should look like, what art is supposed to be. Because you see, you know, like all the things that get the most likes on Instagram or the things that end up in museums and it just... It's like it plays mind games on you, like that's the sort of thing you should be aiming for. But really, it's it doesn't matter at all what you've seen before. Do your own thing. That's like a it's like a weird trap trap to get out of the the border between getting inspired and making your own thing. I don't know. I don't have all the answers there because it happens to me too. I think that's partly why I don't try to look at too much art that looks like my own. Like I don't follow a bunch of like, like when I noticed that my art was looking a lot like Mobius, you know, I stopped following a lot of Mobius fan pages and stuff. Cause I was like, Oh no, I'm just, it's too close. It's too small of a feedback loop. And I started following, you know, looking at stuff online for inspiration that wasn't even art, you know, nature and maybe like, well, of types of art maybe that are more distantly removed from my own. I don't know if that makes sense. Because if I, I guess it's what I'm trying to say is if I'm inspired by drawings that look like mine, that look like things I can actually draw, then those are the things I'm gonna, I might try to draw. But if I'm inspired, inspired by like music or uh, an experience or you know something that I can't actually put on paper, if I'm inspired by you know maybe even things that I can get closer to drawing, like a factory I saw, I don't know. That's, I feel a little bit less mentally trapped by thinking that's what my drawing has to look like. I feel a little bit, it feels a little bit more open-ended. Know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe you don't have that problem at all. Maybe that's just a me problem. Maybe you have totally different problems with with art. Maybe you have no no other problems. Maybe it's smooth sailing for you. Congratulations. had the urge to put a big area of like solid red right here. 
I think I should have used the other nib though. It's a little bit more gentle as far as brush strokes go. Wait, where does the, I gotta, um, feel a little bit cramped here. Where does my false edge go here? Up here and up here. If I have big, bold colors here with less variation in the texture and different colors, then maybe the variation I have on the other side of the drawing will be more powerful. Maybe I'll give like, like a look back and forth between like big solid red area down here in this corner, chaotic swooshy area up there. It's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Don't know if it'll work. Don't know how people actually, you know, sometimes you can go for an idea like that and people will experience it totally different. In a better way or a worse way, or maybe it's neither. Let me try by see if I can smooth out this edge a little bit. I think I might come back in with the pen a little bit now that I've done a lot of knot pen. Just a little bit more here. See, I don't want to ruin things because I like how it kind of looks without the pen, but... In fact, I'm kind of hesitant with the pen right now because I, I kind of wish I had like a pen, like an ink of a different color right now to throw in here, but feeling a little lazy with trying all that. I'm not really an, an ink besides black kind of guy. If it's going to be something besides black, I'm just going to find it one of these markers. Not really sure about this whole area. Um, let's see if we can cover up this smudge up here with some dark blue. Is this the other blue I was using, light blue? Let me see if it looks right. Yeah, I think that was it. 
I made the mistake of not keeping it over here with all the colors I was using. Okay, that's good. I'm starting to feel hungry. I feel like I just ate, although I don't remember what I ate. Oh yeah, spaghetti. I'm gonna be honest, I want more red here. Like this, maybe. Straight up. I'm gonna carry this line straight through like this. This is kind of straight, close enough maybe, hopefully. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. Everything's fine. All right, I think it's time for some yellow. I put it off long enough. Which yellow though? I have two, I have lemon yellow and cadmium yellow. Here's uh, cadmium yellow. Looks pretty good. Lemon yellow also looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna go with cadmium. Let's throw it in here. This looks like a good spot. Um, now I'm wishing I did the lemon. I wonder if I can do both. Is that crazy? No, it's not. Or maybe it is. Maybe that's why I should. Experimenting, just experimenting with adding the yellow to some of the other colors because I mean you can kind of layer pretty with interesting results here. All right, lemon yellow. Lemon yellow just looks kind of diluted actually compared. I don't know, maybe sometimes these colors look differently after they've dried. Definitely is interesting. It's all about what's next to what, how these things look. I should leave some dots of white like I mean it's hard to add white afterwards so I mean maybe I think white is good to remove to leave sometimes it looks cool when there's no white I think if I want to add white later it's gonna be with like like what like a white out pen or like a white Posca pen or something Combining yellow and red with these doesn't really make orange. I'm not sure if I really expected it to. Actually, yellow and the pink kind of makes more of an orange. They kind of blend a little bit. I might come back with the red here to make these strokes look less 
abruptly ended or something. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it's fine. Maybe a little dash of blue down here would look good. I think I need a little bit of yellow here and mostly green up top. Okay, didn't look quite like I expected. Maybe the green was lighter than I was envisioning. We come back with another layer. Maybe I can like, what if I like drew lines in the green with the green? I don't know, but I don't know if that really worked. Maybe some green right here. I feel like this needs a dash of blue. It's getting a little muddy, dangerously so. But is it muddy or is it just shadow? I think you even want your shadows to be a little bit clean, but. There's no rules. Like I said, there's no, there's no PEMDAS for art. A lot of, there's a lot of like tutorials out there. Like this is your technique for making it look good. I know, but uh, what if I want it to look bad? It's really just tutorials for everyone making their art look the same. It's the problem. I'm not saying I have the most individualistic art ever, but that seems to be the result. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I'm sorry if you're here for all the answers. It's not what I have. All I have is this little cute little drawing I'm making that's uh, maybe it's ugly, maybe it's cool, maybe it's not, but the point is, it's a drawing. That's really all that uh, is required. The red is, red is such a powerful color. It's crazy. It blows my mind every time. Crazy, crazy color.
Hmm. I might try drawing some lines like I do with the red with the corner of the blue thing. Instead of, all, instead of all my lines being drawn with the pen, even though these lines are much burlier. Just don't know about this. Got a fistful of markers here, fumbling. I feel like neither of these yellows are quite what I was envisioning for yellow. But it's okay. Copic markers are expensive as hell. We work with what we've got. This yellow kind of makes the the sand marker dissolve in a weird way. It's gotten a little muddy and mushy in there, but eh. what are you going to do? 
what you do if you get a little bogged down. Uh, I was getting a little bit overwhelmed right there. Just go on to another part of the drawing and come back later once you've caught your breath. Actually, I'm going to do some, the, the, I was, look, I was holding too many markers, getting overwhelmed, things were happening too quickly. Time to do some pen drawing. Just drawing random like swoops and curls, kind of, kind of uh, influenced by what we've got on the paper already. Kind of not. This one definitely is. Just kind of tracing the this yellow thing I drew here. I draw it. I don't know if I should contemplate drawing like an outline around this red section. I think I will actually, at least here. I might regret it, but then I, at least if I, you know, run into a similar, similar situation in a future drawing. I remember how I felt about it this time. It looks okay. So some inclines might make me feel better about this area. I think so. Yeah, I think I like that better down there. 
How about this? Some things, some draw some lines, you know, they're just kind of arcing and crossing across everything else. Some things that go with everything, some things that go against it all. I think I like how that, I think I like how it's kind of taking a little bit more form down there. The addition of some, some ink lines. And I guess the markers are ink too, alcohol based ink. Yeah. Nice. Maybe some dotted lines. Yeah, dotted lines. Okay. Thank you to whoever invented dotted lines. All right, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a lot better about this side of the paper now. Now, what about what's going on over here? <laughs> How about a sip of water? While we think about it, got a letter from someone. Let's open it up, take a breather. Ooh, nice little Painted canvas in there. Colorful art to go with what we're working on today. Uh, Dear Peter. Oh, it's a long one. Let's, let's read it really quick. And then by the time we finish reading this, I'll be ready to draw again. It's been good to rest your hand too. I hope this letter finds you safe and sane. I just wanted to send you the, a letter, especially my thanks for your endless content on YouTube. Watching your videos have helped me get back into art and appreciate it more, while also learning to let go of the traditional view of art that not every art piece needs a meaning. By the way, I'm typing this on a typewriter, so sorry for the random white strips throughout this letter. It's correctional tape. You have been and will continue to be an inspiration to me. 
Fun fact, while I was taking an art class in community college, I did a Google Slides presentation on you and your mandala art. The professor thought it was cool. She was a chill professor, but she taught us how to create charcoal erase art, which I didn't like. I always loved how your art can be transcribed into multiple art mediums. I always wondered if there was a way to do an installation version of your art. I work with neon and always wondered how your squiggles would translate into that medium. At the time of writing this letter, I'm procrastinating on doing my animation final to complete my animation degree. Animation is time consuming and hard. I guess I should have mentioned this earlier, but the typewriter I'm using is a Smith Corona SL470 electric typewriter. It has the letter stamp head, but a tactile keyboard with a PSB board telling the head what to write. It's still loud as a regular mechanical typewriter. I even got interested in fountain pens through your channel. I think most of the pens I've bought have been in the 10 to $20 range, beginner pens, but still fun to draw and outline drawings with. Odd thought, it is weird seeing YouTubers or online content creators becoming childhood icons, like how Mr. Rogers was an icon to kids in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Children born in the 2000s will look back at content creators the same way. Hopefully that didn't offend you reading it back. It's like I'm indirectly calling you old. Anyway, thanks for all the content and inspiration you've given me and many others. I've put on your Minecraft Let's Play in the background so many times, it's very relaxing. Another note, when you had long hair, you always reminded me of the character Winslow Leach from Phantom of the Paradise, 1974, before he became the Phantom. Take care, Max. P.S. Are you going to any pen conventions? Oh, and enjoy my square little art thing. Thanks for the letter, Max. Um, I have wanted a typewriter for a very long time. And thank you for the square little art thing. I appreciate that. Um, I've wanted a typewriter for a long time, but it's just like, I know it's like a, I'm almost afraid to get into it. And I know I've had, I've been very overwhelmed in the, in the research, you know, getting into it. I know I just need to sit down, you know, read some reviews, read some guides, like which one do I get? This is what I'm saying, this is what I don't know. I guess get a couple, huh? <laughs> it's a very nice letter though. That is interesting about typewriters. She, there's no backspace. I think this little area here should have, uh, this should be yellow. See, it took a little break took my mind off my drawing for a moment. And when I came back without even thinking, I was just drawing again. So that's a good thing to do if you get a little bit stumped or stuck, in my opinion. I-A-I-M-H-O. the invisible border right here. I think I do like the idea that the, the drawing becomes slightly more simple towards this side of the paper. Uh, also, Max, to answer your question about pen conventions, I did go to the Raleigh Pen Convention 
Pencon. Uh, it was all right. I don't think it's one of the best ones. I feel like I've heard that the DC pen convention is the best one, but DC is like three hours away from me, and so far I haven't felt the urge to drive that far. Maybe I should, but so far I haven't. I mean, it's a lot closer to me than a lot of other people, than it is to a lot of other people, obviously, but... I am glad that things like PenCon are a thing. I mean, I don't mean to discourage people, but it seems like, at least at the Greensboro, I mean, not the Greensboro, the Raleigh one that I went to, it seemed like about half of it were pens I was not that interested in because it was either people that just had a bunch of like, they're just like collectors. They just had like a bunch of old vintage pens that just... Maybe I'm I'm not enough of a pen enthusiast to care about them. They're just like, okay, it's like an old fountain pen. And that, I don't know. It's just like it didn't really mean anything to me. And they had like 400 of them. So it was just like kind of sensory overload as far as like, I don't know, maybe if you had like 10 amazing ones, I'd be like, wow, like tell me about these pens. But if you have like 400 dusty old pens sitting out on a table, I'm just like, Okay, like, I don't know. Obviously, I, I'm not as much of a pen enthusiast as some people. And then the other type of pens that I was not as interested in as people who were um, the pen makers who just like a person with a lathe and some resin blanks. Like some of them look cool, but most of them, they all just look the same all the pens look the same and they all look the same as each other. Like all the different vendors, like they might've all been working together for all I know. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to bash people making pens. Cause that's like a cool thing that I want more of, but I guess in a way I am bashing them that it gets kind of boring after a while. They all like have the same nibs and I don't know. Does that make sense? Does anyone feel the same way? Am I the only one who's like, okay, they're all, just people with lathes. <sighs> Hope I don't make too many people angry, but I don't know what I, I don't know what kind of pens I'm even looking for in fountain pens anymore. So <gasps> found another yellow, pale yellow. Looks like tucked over here next to me. What is going to go in here? <sighs> let's look at the, um, let's look at it again through the, uh, Black and white filter. Hmm. It's all right. I think maybe a little bit more blue and green up here. A little blue and green and Maybe some sand, some sand here, some sand in here and in here. Don't underestimate the power of 
the sand marker. I think it might be worth going back over a lot of this drawing actually now that it's all like dried and i have a better idea of what's going on and you know like adding some little touches here for the like, contrast and shading like a little extra layers here and there Even, maybe not with this sand marker maybe like with blue or i don't know it depends on which colors i'm adding to which colors I don't know, adding the sand to the red right there didn't really do a whole lot. Okay, different color, different color. Green. Put that in here. In here. Right here. A little bit up here. Uh oh. Cut some ink on that. Sorry, I'll try not to close the lids on the desk. I feel like it makes a loud noise. Light blue. Oh, wait, why do I think it was light blue? It's pink. The light blue looks so dark before it dries. Terrifyingly dark. Oh, this is dark blue. No wonder. How am I getting so confused? Getting a little swoopy.
The dark blue and the light blue blend together in some places more than I expected. Blue is an amazing color. Love that. Also green and red and yellow. Great colors. Some, some sand in here. And here. Yellow. with some white highlights left. Might come in with some more red in a second because red is easy to draw on top of other things. Red and blue go on top of other things easier. Excuse me. Maybe a little bit of pen action up here in this section. To def I keep on thinking this is a pull, pull cap. I'm going to break it. It's a twist. Some dotted lines here. Right, that helps a little bit. I don't want to add, to add too much.
few lines in there, a few lines in here. I'm liking these dotted lines. Maybe I should try some dotted lines with a marker. I don't know. I think I need a few more lines up here. Maybe dotted. Sorry, I got a text. You know, I'm kind of really wanting to draw with a white Posca pen on this now. Cool to see the white lines. What goes in here? Layer, just adding some layers. Layer it up, make it a little darker, maybe. And what goes, could do like a little, little pink swoop right there. Maybe like pink wiggles coming in, like could could leave it mostly white, maybe. Pink on the inside, like it's almost like. Pink. I don't know if I don't know like the word pink tiger stripe is coming to my mind, but it's a pink starburst sort of action. I don't know, that was debatable. Debatably, you know, there's no control Z, so you just gotta keep, keep swinging. I 
Here, let's look at something else I got in the mail, then I'll come back to it. I opened this already just to peep inside, but I haven't looked at what this is. I think this, I think this is all there is in here. Um, as you can see, there's like a thing taped together. It says, Hi Peter, hope you're well. I've made three items, each of which I've left uncolored. Holding the bridge will help you get to what you can see. Holding the portal will help you leap into the unknown. Holding the book won't do anything. You have to open it. This is, uh, I guess this is to be colored or something. The nice little piece of paper with a riddle on it. Wrapped up. Ooh. Holding the portal. I think this is the portal. Let me zoom in. It says, holding the portal will help you leap into the unknown. It looks like, it seems like some sort of like clay or plaster cast. That's really cool. I like the texture of it. Holding the bridge will help you get to what you can see. Ooh, I wonder if these are like magical items. We have to like hold it and look at what I can see and I'll teleport there maybe. Have to try it later. I think this is like a plaster cast, maybe like it was cast down in plaster and then maybe this part was carved away afterwards or something. Maybe, I'm not sure. All right, and then Holding the book won't do anything. You have to open it. The Banjo Sunshine Coloring Book, Volume 1. 100 full page, high complexity, pro difficulty divider pages to stop colors from bleeding through. Also includes a curated playlist of vintage music, 35 plus years old art by Hennessy. Wait a second. What is all this about? Bonus years? Are these the... Why are there books listed here? Are these the songs you're supposed to listen to? Maybe the coloring book, maybe they're just things, I don't know. Nice drawings. I think these must be, it seems like they're like mirrored Doesn't mean they're not nice, though. I mean, obviously, maybe at the beginning it explains what's going on here. Oh, look, it's dedicated to me. Thank you. Um... Well, they, I did notice they are somewhat appreciated. That is a cool idea. I 
wonder how well that works. A list of books that you haven't read before to transport you to places you haven't been before. Vintage music. Um, other bits. People, places, and things. Words added together equals happy math. Gotcha. Gotcha. Five thingies of music. Hmm. Yeah, I like this um, coloring book just partly because, I mean, there's nice drawings to color, but partly because there's so much more to it besides just things to color, right? It's like a nice little curated experience. Thank you for sending that, Hennessy. And the cool little sculptures. The bridge and the portal. Maybe these can be colored too. Watercolors might work well on these. So the water would go down in, in the little in the little holes. I think. The secret, the answer to this blank space here is to come back in with some ink. I just I just saw this kind of like little drip shapes here in this part of the drawing, and I thought I might like that over here in this part of the drawing also. I'm going to get in there with that. Kind of messed up already. It's okay. So these two lines are like too close together. Too close for comfort. To another layer of drips. I did the same thing again. This um, nib is very scratchy. It's usually in a good way, but sometimes it's getting in my nerves a little bit. All right. Now I feel a little bit better about this. For example, I can come in with a little bit more blue. I don't know if I want to do all of it. Oop, that's dark blue. A little bit more blue. Um, no, first, green. Green for the background. And for the main part of the background, I might come in and touch up the background behind these drips with some sand and or pink, maybe some yellow. Sorry, if I'm not talking, it's usually just because I'm concentrating slash enjoying the process of putting the, putting the lines down. It's like you can create your own little, I feel like doing things like this is like, it's like a little pen slash marker obstacle course, a little dexterity course, and you can create your own. Like I created these little lines and now I can color them. Usually I don't color them. Usually I'm just drawing more lines around the other lines, right? Okay, I think I want like the ends of these to be like yellowish. And it really does seem like these turn more yellow as the ink dries. 
which was weird, but. Hmm. Dark blue here for the contrast of it being like under an underhang. Light blue. I mean, the light blue isn't that light. The problem with putting the light blue here is I don't want to put the light blue also right here because then there's not enough difference between the two layers. Oops. Thought this was going to be light blue. <laughs> I don't know why I keep on un uncorking the wrong pen. Um, could switch to. I think pink is the answer here for this last little band. Then I can come in with some sand, maybe. light blue. There's my sand. about this thing though you know what I haven't used much of my, much of it all is all that the gray that I used some of it at the beginning it's kind of weird how that's barely present I totally forgot about it I could just leave this white whitish And some yellow down here. I'm happy to leave this little spot here white. I think it looks kind of cool. I kind of do want to go get the uh, white Posca pens. I think I have some right outside somewhere.
I'm gonna go get them. Wait, wait, first, I think this is the gray I was using. Let me see if I can add this to a few things and see how it looks. I don't really know where to put it though. Kind of makes things uh, darker. Should I just like use it to shade the sides of things? I don't know. Maybe that. I feel like I'm maybe making things just look weird or worse or something. But maybe the drawing will look too flat unless I. Unless I do this. Maybe it needs like, maybe it needs a much more powerful gray though. That's what I'm wondering. Because it's only the, the gray five. Maybe it needs like a gray nine. And when I say needs, like, I say that in the loosest possible sense. It's still totally optional. I think this is adding a little bit more. I think this is helping. Maybe. It's hard to say, I'm not doing that much. I'm just adding like little bits and pieces because I'm a scaredy cat. A little bit over here, there's a hair on it. Yeah, I had a pretty big swath right there, like gotta be proud of me for that. Just not good at using markers. I never will be. Just give up right now, right? That's the spirit.
Maybe I'm going too far now. Maybe I should have stopped a while ago. Maybe I should have been using a cool gray, though. Oh, I am using cool gray. Maybe I should have been using a warm gray. Oh, goodness. Art's so stressful. Got a really big mess here on this paper. Time to go get that white pen I was talking about. Oh, oh, oh. We gotta finish this video soon because I gotta pee and this is a no edit video. I'm not I'm not cutting out any cuts or anything. So I don't wanna have to make y'all wait while I go to the bathroom. Just might as well just finish it. We got a Posca pen here. Gotta get it started. Although this camera is about to overheat, so it might turn off. If it does, I'll turn it on right before, right when I notice. So I didn't intentionally turn it off. Okay, that's what I'm saying as far as the no edit thing. It's an arbitrary rule, but I'm doing my best. All right, come on, pen. I gotta pee. Start working. Have I not done enough to get this pen working? This is where we will test the pen. Ah, there we go. Uh -huh. There we go. Look at those nice lines. Let's see what happens. Kind of faint, but it's okay. They don't need to be like overpowered. Okay, the, the other camera turned off because it overheated, even though I have a fan on. Those cameras just weren't meant on to meant to be on all the time. It's okay. I think the, the strong paint isn't coming out of this pen right now. It's alright. Kind of like watery right now is all I'm saying.
I think it'll get better as we keep going. Drawing some little circles. I like drawing little circles. Who doesn't like little circles? Then, uh, maybe some other little lines here and here. Maybe should, there should be more on this side. So it's like highlights or something. Yeah. Can outline some stuff. I mean, whatever you want to do. I'm going to have this paper here. Maybe it needs to be shaken more. Because I know this pen can do better. I feel like this outline looks pretty cool right here. dotted lines with this. I mean, it looks cool when it's a little bit faint too, because then all the lines kind of mix together. Okay, I'm liking how this is looking. I feel like maybe I should change the angle of the camera because I, for this pen, I have to hold the uh, pen like straight up and down. So my hand is maybe blocking what I'm doing, you know, because I have to hold it like this mostly. Trying to make sure I don't put my hand down on any wet ink or paint. Now we've got paint in the picture here. I 
Let's see, this is really faint. A little bit disappointed in this pen. I don't know if I activated it wrong or something. Actually, maybe it's the paper. I don't know. It's maybe the paper's like too porous and the, the paint is like going in into the paper instead of staying on top. You know what I mean? It does help to do the dots. The dots seem to show up the best for some reason. And they look cool too. So what's not to like? I'm, trying, I'm resisting drawing anything in this big featureless red area because I think it's important that it stays a big featureless red area. Otherwise it loses some of its primal power. I think I'm liking how it's looking. I mean, it's pretty chaotic. I mean, it's like all over the place. It's very busy, bright. Not a lot of like, of, of like a cohesive color theme. But I enjoy it. Like sometimes when I'm frustrated at night and I'm worried about life, and there's too many thoughts in my head and I just want to, like, just want to scream. I feel like this is kind of what my screams look like visually a little bit. Just like, ah. it's like this. Ah. You know what I mean? What do you think of this? Let me hold it up to the camera. I feel like it's the type of drawing you can just keep on adding things forever. So I should just stop and be happy with it and go pee. Let me see if this camera will turn on again. Hello. Hello. There we are. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with me while we drew this. I think it turned out pretty good. Let me recenter the camera again. Here we go. Thank you to Hennessy for the sculptures and the color, coloring book and to Max for the, the letter from the typewriter. And I hope you all have a good day. Take it easy.
Bye.